lastly, lastly, does anyone have an explanation for why when I put negative 1 into A and B, things blow up? Anyone got a suggestion for me? Yeah, Eric. Is it because A and B have to be either greater than or equal to 0? Okay, I could suggest that A and B have to be positive. That would be a bit of a problem for me because so far on the board I've written this and I've said that it's correct and that would be a real problem for us if it weren't. Okay? Now, you might then say, oh, well, maybe one can be negative and one can't. Which then, of course, begs the question, why? <laughs> like, who made that up? Like, you know, oh, we decided there should be seven on the side and the game should last 45 minutes and you can only have one of them negative, right? Like, who made that up? Okay? The real question is, who even decided this? Do any of you even know why it works in the first place? Because the teacher told you? Because you saw it in your textbook? Because it allowed you to get the answer right on the test? There's a bit of a lesson here, by the way, before I show you why this is the case. Um, before I show you why it ends up with a paradox. Please don't ever do that. I know you've, as a mathematician myself, I've done this for years, I've accepted rules and not known why they worked. If you accept rules and not know why they work, you're not a mathematician, you're a machine. And you're not here to become machines, right? There are machines that will do your job better than you, if all you're trying to do is be a machine. When you see a rule, don't accept it. Like, it's there for a reason, work it out. I will tell you why, you want to pay very close attention. Why do we say that the square root of AB is the square root of A times the square root of B? Um, well, just have a look at us doing these square roots over here. The whole point of saying that something equals something else is that if you have a look at the left and you have a look at the right, you should be able to do the same things to both sides and get the same thing out. Do you agree? Right? That was the whole point of doing all of this to get to here because if you square those, you'll get that. Okay? Now the reason why we say this is because if you take the square root of AB, right? let's say, what is that number? Okay, well, I don't know what it is. Let's just give it a name. Let's call it X. And then you say, well, what about root A and root B separately? Right? What is that? Well, imagine you're in a universe where you don't know that these things are the same. Right? Well, we'll call that, we'll give it another name. Okay? What can we do with these things to see what the relationship with these is? Okay? Now, you've been doing this for a while. For example, if I told you, hey, here's a number. And here is another number. And I say, hey, is there some relationship between these two things? Right? You'd say, well, I guess what I'd have to do is kind of like eliminate something over here so I could get these guys talking to each other. Do you agree? Okay. Now you're going to have to do the same thing here. It's a lot simpler though than with parametrics. What can you do to these things to make them talk? You can square them, right? Okay, you square x squared. Sorry, you square x, right? That's going to give you... Now don't, don't skip anything here. That's that, right? Well, if it's the square root of AB, you better get back... A, B. Do you, do you agree with that? Okay. What about this? Now, because you're so good at your index laws and your thirds, you sort of almost jump to the answer, but don't, right? Because that's the whole reason why this works or why it doesn't work. This is the square root of A, square root of B, squared. This is not just as simple, right? When you've got two things, a product being squared, what happens at the end? You've got to square both of the factors, don't you? Right? So this is in fact root A squared and root B squared. Do you agree with that? Okay, now that makes sense. Okay, but look, look now you see, oh, well, but that's A and that's B, right? So what's a fair conclusion out of this? Are X and Y the same number? Well, they could be. That's perfectly reasonable. That is a possibility. But it's not the only possibility, because you squared them, right? You squared to make them talk. And you know that x and y aren't necessarily the same number. How do I show that? How do I show it? I, you guys know, you shouldn't divide through when you see something like this, right? You should actually move this guy over here, and then you should... Well, surprise, surprise, you should factorize, right? So then you notice, wait a second. There's not one solution to this, there are two. You're getting suspicious yet, yeah, right? X is not just, it doesn't just have to be Y, right? It can be minus Y as well, 
right? And in fact, if you go ahead, you can actually graph this thing on the complex plane. When uh, A and B are negative, when they're both negative, which is what we were encountering before, you don't take the positive one. You must take the negative one, right? Because both solutions are valid. It just depends on where you're interested.